All right, my friends, Goldman Sachs is saying the economy is nearly recession-proof. Oh, for the love of the almighty. Um, look, I don't like Goldman Sachs. I just had to delete a video where I was saying even worse than that, but because I'm not sure uh, YouTube would appreciate that. I'm not a fan, so let's just put that way. The old guy, they had a guy named Lloyd Blankenfein or Fien. Uh, he was a CEO for many years, and uh, I just don't like him. All there is to it, if there's an epitome of the swamp, uh, this is it right here. So anyway, uh, Goldman Sachs, and anytime you hear that uh, uh, Goldman Sachs is saying anything, I, you'd probably be better served if you took the opposite bet. <laughs> All right, so uh, this is CNBC Dateline. Did I say my man Anthony had re re sent this to me? Uh, so appreciate it, Anthony. Uh, Dateline, 31 December, updated to January 2020. Key points, the U.S. economy is structurally less recession-prone today, says Goldman Sachs economist. That comes just after months of Wall Street feared that an inverted yield curve was signaling an Im imminent recession. <laughs> yeah. Who was it? I think it's Paul Samuelson. Not a fan of Paul Samuelson, the economist from, I think it was MIT, who took economist and uh, economics and made it less of philosophy and more of mathematical because of physics envy. I, but he did say economists have predicted uh, 17 of the last four recessions, i.e. they're always, this is good. I just, I tell you, man, I, I thought that was funny. Um, I, look, Paul Samuelson, it, he's not, I don't, I, I don't have any animosity towards him. I just wish the economics profession would get more back to the philosophy of things as opposed to the all econometrics, as if mathematics can validate or prove any kind of rational behavior or thought. Uh, this is the thing with economy, economics. They're like, oh, it's not rational to, I don't know, freaking whatever it is. Uh, rational is in the eye of this thing right here called the brain. Economists can't figure out the brain anymore, psychologists or sociologists. So the brain is a very unique thing to the specific individual. Uh, most economists know this, yet they want to somehow rationalize it with uh, Phillips curves. And I just, oh, uh, it pains me. All right, just months after everyone on Wall Street was worried about a recession, Goldman Sachs has, has now said a downturn is unlikely. In fact, the firm's economists stopped short of saying the U.S. Is a, uh, US economy is, is recession-proof. Now, at the end of the day, we always know if you're negative and it doesn't come to pass, everyone will say, all right, you give the call, let's try. If you're positive and it doesn't come to pass, everyone's going to hold you and say, ah, oh, what an idiot. James Glassman, the Dow 30,000 guy, uh, Irving Fisher from the uh, 1929 um, all the, the positive, you got negative Nellies and positive Polys. I just coined that TM positive Polys always get ridiculed when their positive take on things doesn't come to fruition. But the negative Nellies, the Tom Malthus, the Al Gores, the Paul Ehrlichs, the James Hansen, uh, the guardian who said by 2020, the UK will be underwater. Those, well, that was the guardian. I was just reporting a Pentagon report. No one ever says, oh, because we're negative. We're always negative about the future. But if you say anything positive, it doesn't come to fruition. Oh, you're an idiot. So Goldman Sachs is, of course, stopping short of saying the economy is recession-proof. A, because that'd be silly. Uh, B, because they don't want to be held as a name next James Glassman. And I'm a big fan of James Glassman, by the way. Uh, Goldman analysis that Goldman Sachs conducted of the current potential risks of growth show that they are mostly muted. The report found that the pillars of the great moderation that began in the 80s, low levels of volatility marked by sustainable growth and muted inflation interrupted only by the financial crisis of more than a decade ago, are still standing. <laughs> Wait a second. Is that the same guy, Rosenberg, that uh, Consuela Mack was interviewing? I got to look at, hold on, we're going to read that second. Investors could be excused for getting a little nervous over such calls as optimism awful also was heavy in the late 2007 as it was in 1999. Overall, the changes, uh, okay, okay, that's not the same guy. Overall, the changes underlying the great moderation appear intact, and we see the economy is structurally less recession prone today. While new risks could emerge, uh, none of the main sources of recent recessions, oil shocks, inflationary overheating, financial imbalances seem too concerning for now. As a result, the prospects for a soft landing look better than thought. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. It won't be a va vast... I, I just think Japan is the way to look. It's not going to be huge growth. and not going to be huge negative stuff either. It's just going to be moderate to low to moderate growth with a couple of recessionary things thrown in there that will probably be painful, but won't be anything like 2007. I completely agree with that. The view is a sea change from some of the fears that permeated Wall Street last summer and early fall. 
Uh, worries surge of the U.S.-China trade war, global economic weakness, and geopolitical risks from Brexit and other sources would act as severe drags on growth. Who is I just reading that says Brexit was going to, for sure, that, what did they say, five years ago, uh, that, Bre that England would never go be in the positive growth thing. And it, a respected guy, too. I forgot who it was. What a fool, man. More freedom means less growth. That's nuts. A yielding curve, a yield curve inversion uh, helps stoke those fears. An inversion has correctly predicted each of the last seven recessions. In August, a New York Fed indicator that tracks the yield curve put the risk of a downturn at 38%, the highest since the financial crisis. However, those fears have ebbed as the tariff rhetoric has cooled and the yield curve has reverted. The New York Fed tracker now puts recession over the next 12 months as about 24.6%, about where it was in February. Uh, Goldman's economists do not dismiss the risk of recession, but says some of the major headwinds have dissipated. Uh, the U.S. has become largely energy independent. Thank you, fossil fuels. Thank you, fossil fuels. We're not relying on the, the fascists in the Middle East to dictate our ability to heat our homes. Yes, freaking USA in your face. In your face. Uh, for any of you guys who like metal, there's an old band called Carnivore. And they got a song called USA. Yeah, USA. USA for USA uh, by a guy in Peter, uh, uh, Peter Steele. Yeah, Peter Steele. Is that him? It's Peter O'Toole. Is that an actor? Peter Steele, I think is his name. Yeah, Peter Steele. Uh, with, it penned those lyrics. And just what a freaking song. Oh. Freaking! If you want to get back to old '80s metal, listen to Carnivore and Peter Steele, that guy. And he went on to do Typo Negative, which that didn't that didn't do much for me. But Carnivore is fantastic. Uh, the USA has become largely independent. Uh, Federal Reserve officials have been more vexed by a lack of inflation, and the financial system has been less levered since the crisis due to sharp deceleration in private sector debt compared to income and more stringent regulations of the banking system. All right. Uh, GDP grew at a 2.5% rate in the fourth quarter of 2007 uh, before plummeting when Lehman, okay, uh, indeed, Goldman Sachs' rosy, uh, rosy view is now better than Wall Street consensus. All right, well, there you go. Um, I, I, look, I 100% agree. I think the economy is not nearly recession-proof, but uh, I don't hold that Goldman Sachs has any more knowledge than you or I as we see here uh, frequenting our Main Street uh, Firms and economies and shops where these guys are sitting in the fancy towers of D.C., Boston, and, and New York. All right, we'll see you.